Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I thought we'd do a benchmark comparison between some pretty new phones and a couple a little bit older phones. This is the OnePlus One. Here we have the Galaxy Note 3. We have the iPhone 5S and released today, actually, the iPhone 6 Plus. So you can see we've got all these phones. I thought we'd run some benchmarks on them. Let's unlock them all. And just to show you, nothing's running on any of these. So nothing's running on any of these. I went into the task manager. Uh, let's end this one. Uh, I did end all of these things beforehand. So just to be fair. So what we're going to do is run 3D Mark on them. And we'll run another benchmark as well. And 2-2 and see how this goes. And see what kind of scores we come up with with all of these. Now all of these are at maximum screen brightness as well. I believe I turned off auto. Yes, I turned off auto, and you can see everything's at maximum screen brightness, just to give you an idea of how bright they actually get. So let's go into 3D Mark on all of these. And here we are. So we'll wait, checking for updates. We'll give it a moment. And on every one of these, we'll run Ice Storm Unlimited. And I'm going to get the emails across all of them. They've all got email running. As you can see, it's all popping in now. So let's see if we can run these all at the same time, if possible. For the sake of the video, I'll speed this up about 20 times. And the results are in for both of these these phones. Let's get this to swap here. As you can see, everything's completed. And at the end, we've got the iPhone 5S coming in with 15,164, followed by the brand new iPhone 6 Plus at 18,167, then followed by the Galaxy Note 3 at 19,212, followed by the OnePlus One, or being the winner, at 19,388. Now, there's different scores for different things. The graphic test score was one out by a lot actually with the iPhone 6 Plus, but there's different things that give these overall results. Let's try another benchmark. So we'll close all of these out. And let's move on to Antutu. So let's open that up on all of these. Now we'll run Antutu and see how that works out. So we'll open that on all the devices. Now it's run previously on the iPhone 5S, so it's going to give us a result for some reason, and I, I can't find a way to easily clear that. So you'll see the same result over here since I restored the app over here. But we have the latest versions on all of these, and what we'll do is just test again. Now some of you might be wondering, how much RAM does the iPhone 6 Plus have? Well, let's go over to device info, and some of you wondered, the iPhone 5S and the 6 have the same amount of RAM. We have 975 megabytes, basically a gigabyte of RAM, same as you have on the iPhone 5S. Now, I haven't noticed any slowdown on either devices, so that may play some factor into it, but I thought I'd just bring that up. As far as speed goes, you can see here if I scroll down, you've got two cores and you have two cores. It says 1.3 gigahertz here. Uh, we really don't know for sure, but let's go over to test and we'll go to test and we'll test again. And let's hit the button here. Let me just stop here for a moment. As you can see, maybe you saw in the, the fast motion of the video that the app keeps crashing 
on iOS 8 on both the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 6 Plus. So in this case, I thought it would be best to reboot them and let's try it one more time. Hopefully it's not an incompatibility with the new OS release. After trying that test over and over, it just doesn't seem to work on the iPhone 5S or 6 Plus. It must be software incompatibility with iOS 8. Now, they haven't updated the app since iOS 8 came out, so that definitely could factor in. But we couldn't get past this test. This was the previous score for the iPhone 5S. We don't know what the 6 Plus has yet as far as Antutu benchmarks. If we go to detail here, you can see the different scores that the OnePlus One and the Note 3 got. I also was able to run the HTC One M8 scores, but they don't really have any other benchmarks, and I wanted to show you that, but this got 27, 129. But in previous tests with Android, it got a little bit faster, so that could play into it with the operating system as well. Let's try a different test, and as you can see, I plugged the iPhone 6 plus in as it's actually only got 7% battery life left. It's the first day I've been using it, so let's Go out of here, you can see who won there, obviously. We'll close all, swipe these off. And the one plus one is the monster in this particular test. So let's run one more benchmark utility. And that will be Geekbench 3. Just to verify again, you can see nothing else is running. And here we have ARM 1.38 gigahertz, one gigaram, like I mentioned before. So we're getting the same sort of things, 1.3 gigahertz, one gig of RAM. Then we've got the Galaxy Note 3, and you can see we have three gigs of RAM, quad core 2.27 gigahertz processor, quad core 2.46 gigahertz processor. So these should be pretty interesting. We'll run these benchmarks and see how they do. Again, I'll speed this up, and these tests usually take a lot less time than the previous ones. You can see those all finished pretty quickly, and in the lead this time, as far as single core, we have the iPhone 6 Plus with 1629, followed by the iPhone 5S at 1414. Again, we have the OnePlus One, and then the HD, I was going to say HTC, but Galaxy Note 3. On the multi-core side though, we have quad-core processors here and multi-core or dual-core processors over here. We're pretty comparable, but the winner in this test is actually the Galaxy Note 3, as you can see here at 2932, then the OnePlus, or the iPhone 6 Plus, then the OnePlus One, and the iPhone 5S. So pretty interesting comparisons. Depending on which benchmark utility you use, you're going to get different sorts of results, so that's pretty interesting. Let's check out web browsing real quick. A lot of you want to see how how quickly things load, and that may or may not be relevant depending. Uh, we are on the same Wi-Fi, and my Wi-Fi connection can easily handle up to 50 different connections at once, so sh we shouldn't have an issue there. We should get a good idea of how quickly it actually loads. So let me close all of this. We'll go into Chrome on these devices. We'll go into Safari on these devices. Let's close this out. We have no windows open on any of them, so let's open a window here. And the first thing we'll do is we'll go to, you know, we'll go to Zolotech on these. I don't see it here. I'll try to hit go on all of these at the same time. Let go, and we'll see what happens here. So you can see they're all pretty fast. The iPhone 5S is lagging behind for some reason quite a bit. I'm not really sure why, but you saw that was pretty quick. Now all of these should scroll quite nicely. We've got fast processors in all of them, and we've gotten to the point where things scroll pretty nicely for the most part. We'll go to one other website. It's a pretty graphic intensive website, so I like to use it uh, just for that reason. Go to Apple on all of them. You can see this one's 
cached with Apple Live for some reason. I'm not sure why, but you can see that was pretty quick on all of them. These Android phones haven't been to that website before, nor has this phone. So pretty quick on all of them in the real Real test is real world use and none of them feel slow, but I'd love to hear what you think about all of them. They're all great devices, obviously different screen sizes, but all very different, but very much the same depending on what you're looking for. So let me know which one you would pick in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.